Another surprise from the deep sea, the tripod fish. You're among the first people to have ever laid eyes on it in history. And its larvae are mind-blowing too. That's not AI. Don't think so anyway. I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the top kinds of deep sea fish you couldn't see properly until now. But before we dive into why this fish is standing on stilts, like it's waiting for a bus, let's take a moment to appreciate how incredible it is, and that we can see it at all. Not so long ago, spotting such a deep sea creature would have been impossible. Hidden under crushing pressure, freezing temperatures and complete darkness, it was completely out of reach. And forget crystal clear video, Back in the 60s, saying the first deep sea images shot on film were low resolution would be generous. Fast forward to today, and thanks mainly to advanced underwater robotics, we're exploring a world that defies imagination more than ever before. Until about 150 years ago, people believed the deep ocean was a barren wasteland past about half a mile down. That is, until undersea telegraph cables started needing maintenance. And, surprise, things were growing on them, even miles beneath the surface. Of course, they could have just asked the Madeiran fishermen, who'd been hauling up black scabbard fish from the Atlantic depths of over a mile for nearly 300 years. A top deep-sea predator with a serious set of teeth, the scabbard fish slices through crabs, squid and other fish, like it's auditioning for an underwater horror movie. In Madeira, though, it's considered a delicacy and a national dish. But back to the tripod fish. Everyone loves tripod fish. Why does it stand up on its fins like a ballerina? Scientists think it's a clever trick, lifting itself effortlessly into the current so tiny crustaceans and plankton just drift into its path. Facing upstream, those antennae-like rays act like tripwires, detecting dinner as it floats past. With these bright lights blasting, it's easy to forget that down here it's normally pitch black, a world where sunlight never reaches. The tripod fish is not looking, it's feeling its way through the darkness, relying on touch to find its next meal. And the deep sea is bursting with fish like this that range from mesmerising to downright unsettling. And the more we explore, the more strange and wonderful creatures keep popping up, like a never-ending lucky dip of deep sea weirdness. It's estimated there are at least 2,000 species lurking below half a mile down. It takes us a little while to get around all this fish weirdness, but there are one or two that are familiar. You know the free-swimming anglers, famous from Nemo and the like. Best friend. Good feelings gone. <laughs> They've been fishing with their lures way before humans. And perhaps you've been wowed by the barrel-eyed fish too, with their transparent heads and eyes looking upwards to spot prey. And there's a whole variety of fish with strange eyes in the deep. Then there's fangtooths with teeth so big they can't shut their mouths properly. And chimera, also known as ghost fish or spook fish, which are related to sharks. And then there's things like toadfish, which do seem to have a face like a toad. And by the way, red is the new black in the ocean. Red light disappears very quickly near the surface. And so red or black, you won't see them in the dark. And there's a whole variety of peculiar eels, like snipe eels, the animal with a record 750 vertebrae in its back. As you know by now, the deep sea is the go-to place if you want something a bit different. Many people have commented here on Induna that deep sea fish are horrific, their worst nightmare. But some have also said they're cute, especially the snailfish, which, by the way, I covered in another recent video. And I've not really mentioned some of the smaller and bigger sharks you also find down in the deep, like cookie cutters, goblin and Greenland sharks. And so look out on Induna for a whole other video on deep sea sharks. 
and even some of the fish that we see on the surface have been found down here, like the mighty sunfish, the biggest bony fish in the world, which goes very deep, despite its name. So, as well as seeing some of these fish in glorious high definition for the first time, we've been starting to learn more about their elusive lifestyles. And I'm going to zone into a few for more detail. Look out for the dragonfish in particular. But first up in the spotlight, the lizardfish. These fish thrive at depths down to 2 miles, about 3,500 metres, with its elongated bony head, needle-like teeth and huge unblinking eyes. This fish is built for ambush in the abyss. Those big eyes pick up telltale flashes of bioluminescence as creatures move through the water, revealing themselves by exciting glowing plankton. It's not easy to understand their world, but this is what it might look like. Because, of course, there's never any light until we humans switch them on. And it waits until an unsuspecting fish or crustacean wanders too close. Then, in a lightning-fast strike, it snaps its jaws shut, trapping its prey in a mouth full of multiple rows of sharp teeth. And when food finally drifts by, they're not picky. If it moves, they'll try to eat it, including other lizardfish. When it comes to reproduction, they've got an extra survival hack. They're simultaneous hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male and female reproductive organs at the same time. And as dating options in the deep are pretty limited, they never swipe left. They mate with any other lizardfish they find. Presumably if they don't get eaten first. If there were an award for the most intimidating smile, the dragonfish would win hands down. With fang-like teeth, a jet-black body, and a bioluminescent lure dangling from their chin, they look like something straight out of a sci-fi film. But don't let that fearsome appearance fool you. These fish are only about a foot long, up to two max, that's about 60 centimetres, but usually much smaller. What they lack in size they make up for in hunting skills. Their transparent teeth helps them sneak up on prey, while their hinged jaws allows them to swallow creatures half their own body size. And if that wasn't impressive enough, some also produce their own red light, which is practically invisible to most deep-sea creatures, giving them a sneaky advantage in the near field when stalking dinner. These deep-sea dragonfish come in quite a few varieties, more than you might expect, Basically, dragonfish are the deep sea's version of a stealthy, glow-in-the-dark ninja. Too cool for their barbels. The cusk eel and the cutthroat eel. Two deep sea dwellers that look like they were designed for maximum mystery. One lurks in the abyss with the grumpy sour face of a fish that has just lost an argument, while the other seems like it's auditioning for a role as the ocean's biggest daredevil. These larger organisms really don't like to be in this fluid. Because it can dive into the toxic underwater brine pools. The pickle, there's a pickle. Cusk eels, despite their name, aren't true eels. They're more like eel-shaped fish with sensory pelvic fins near their throat, helping them feel their way through the ever-present darkness, which, because we've got the lights on, we keep forgetting. Although they're clearly scavengers, cutthroat eels are thought to be active hunters too, unlike a lot of deep-sea fish. and they've been filmed swimming along the edge of one of the most hardcore habitats in the deep sea, the brine pools, super salty lakes under the sea. Hunting for unfortunate victims that have fallen in, but they too are dicing with death, acting like vultures trying to get carrion in the salt. And now we come to the gulper eel. This eel is best known for its ridiculously oversized mouth, which is so large it makes up nearly a quarter of its body length. Recent footage, which I can't show here because of copyright, so I've drawn it, shows that it inflates the mouth like a balloon, presumably sucking in its prey, although some think it's to make it look big and intimidating like cats do when they're scared. Like when a five-ton robot with huge lights appears from nowhere, for example. 
In case you're interested to know more, there's some National Geographic clips, and I'll put a link to those below. Like many deep-sea creatures, it's probably not a picky eater, because food is so scarce in the deep. And it probably sucks in a lot of small stuff, but when it eats something bigger, you can see it inside. It looks really odd. A bit like a cartoon character that swallowed a grand piano. Basically, this fish is part vacuum cleaner, part inflatable scare tactic, and 100% one of the strangest hunters in the abyss. For centuries, the deep ocean was just a dark void, with only battered specimens dragged up in nets, giving us fragmented clues about what lived there. Now, thanks to AI-guided ROVs, remote vehicles, deep diving drop rigs and next-gen submarines, all fitted with ultra-high-definition cameras, we're bringing the deep sea into sharper focus than ever before. It's like finally getting front-row seats to the ocean's greatest show. And it's nothing short of spectacular.